What's up, how's it going? Today we're going to go over how to draw a kind of generic uh, scorpion, by the way. They were say generic because there's so many crazy different types of scorpions. And, uh, you know what I mean? This is just kind of one... This is one way to draw, you know, those types of scorpions. You know, there's different ones. There's just giant black ones and, uh, you know. But like I said, we're just going to go over a generic, uh, kind of an all-encompassing scorpion. So first thing I want to talk about the scorpion... Well, then the arachnid family, they have eight legs. Uh, I know the the uh, rhino beetle we went over had like three, right, and then something else. But these this guy has eight, one, two, three, four on each side, one, two, three, four. And then he also has the kind of like claws on the front. I forget the scientific term for that. And he also has a segmented tail with a stinger at the end of that that kind of curls over the top. I just drew this to kind of flatten it out for you. Uh, but this little symbol thingy represents that. Um, but that's kind of the biggest part to to know about that, you know. I mean, if you want to know the segments of the legs, I believe they segment one, two, three at the front, you know. They have like two joints uh, and little kind of legs. And I think they even might even have an extra little thing to stand on, you know. But there's two massive, like bigger joints. Um, so remember this is that they have an exoskeleton. You know, we are the reverse, you know. We are soft on the outside and then hard on the inside. These guys are soft on the inside and hard on the outside. Um, so let's kind of get into... A scorpion. Uh, let me switch pages actually. Oof. All right, so I'm gonna draw him kind of like. I'm gonna think about his body parts as shapes, and that's kind of the easiest thing to do. This is something I preach all the time, and I say it pretty much in every video on every topic. Is I pretty much talk about. Uh, you know, the shape thing, because it's kind of all-encompassing in drawing. You know, it really is. So I'm going to think of this segment, and it does kind of move. It can move a lot. It's kind of like a hot dog, like a corn dog shape. You know what I mean? You know, a corn dog shape like, you know, kind of like that. And I'm going to be thinking about his stinger up here. It's going to curl around. I'll segment that later. I'm just drawing a very light you know, hopefully you can see this. Let me look. Yeah, you can kind of see it. And I'm going to think about his claws coming out one side. And the other one's going to kind of, where you have to think about overlapping. I'm drawing circles. He's got this kind of twinky hands, right? Huh. Corn dog body, twinky hands. And then his legs. His legs on the other side, and I'm just kind of placing them, you know, very loosely, obviously, you know, very simplistic. See, so far I have a very just super basic outline. Uh, I have a kneaded eraser with me if I need it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of the body. I'm going to start trying to break it down into more structural shapes. I'm going to think of it more as a rectangle, you know, maybe like a remote control or something. And I'm going to do that to start giving it structure. And uh, pulling this down, pulling that down, just thinking about it like as a remote control almost. You know, I'm just going to start thinking about it as a box. Kind of tapers toward the front. It's got this kind of front segment right here. Kind of comes close. And, uh, sorry about that, I'm gonna check a message. And, uh, all right, so, so I had to check a message in my. I'm gonna think about this. I'm gonna draw a little smaller shape for kind of a, he has two kind of fangs sticking out of his mouth. I mean, there's more you can do, but honestly, I'm just gonna draw these little fangs sticking out. Kind of thinking of his center line. segments uh don't know exactly how many segments but we can uh break it down to see i like to think of them as tiny little marshmallows stuck together you 
you know, just trying to work stuff out. Now I'm going to work out the shape that the claws make. They kind of come from, uh, you know, kind of underneath him, underneath his body mass. You know, those two big joints over here, and then one, and then kind of stepping down. One, two, right here, one, two, and then stepping down. See, it's kind of hard to count. Uh, it's gonna, I'm going to probably put one, be hidden behind that claw a little bit. Then I'm going to try to draw the shape of the claw a little bit larger. Just I want to change it as I'm looking at it. It's got this circular shape. If you're eating like crab, you got a very, very similar to crab. It's got this circle with kind of this spike sticking out of here. It's almost kind of a counterintuitive shape. It's got this shape a little bit more conform to the circle of the other the other side of the claw. So where this will make more sense as we uh, kind of start shading this thing. Same thing pulls back here into another joint into the other claw. And the other claw, the claw is kind of cylindrical. It's kind of flat from this angle. You know I mean, it's kind of like a, you know what I mean? There's a circular from here, but it kind of has this coin shape. So it's going to be a little bit flat from the side. One leg goes behind there. I'm kind of moving where I was. Two legs. Three legs. Four way back there. It's kind of behind there. So now, wow, it's getting kind of crowded in here. It's getting a little bit dark. I'm going to try to like rub my hand over it, maybe get like, I don't know, that kind of loosens up the drawing a little bit, like my cup, like a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to go into kind of stuff that's a little bit more permanent, you know. I'm going to think about the shadow pattern. And the shadow pattern, I'm, I'm thinking about how he's built from the top. He has this kind of extra layer at the top. And I'm going to put down some shadow on the side over here. I think it would, because I think the sun would be coming from above. And that probably would probably be covered. I want this guy to be kind of dark, very similar to the beetle, so I'm going to put a little dark kind of core shadow on the side there. Throw a thicker, darker line toward the back there. I want to start actually, uh, what do you call that? Constructing out these shapes and having them make sense to the viewer a little bit. I use line a lot. Uh, I, there went there was a period of time where I was a caricaturist at SeaWorld, and I I used tons and tons of line on everything, and I had to try to pull back for years because I used too much line. And then I started using no line. And so now I'm trying to pull that back, you know. Um, it's kind of a balance of line and no line. Like I said, line I've noticed contains shapes and can make stuff look very, very attractive. It can also make stuff look a little bit more cartoony than you may like, but uh, cartoony can be good, especially if you're an illustrator. You know, it's going to be a tiny bit of tiny bit of cartooniness for sure. I mean, if you look at stuff like Norman Rockwell, um, not that I'm comparing myself to him, or Norman Rockwell is an awesome painter, but... You know, amazing, amazing illustrator. And that guy, that guy, um, you know, a lot, there's a lot of lines in his stuff. You know, he had, he had a lot of, uh, kind of, he had a lot of slight cartooniness. You know, a lot of it was trying to capture the character of it. Um, 
So I did like, I thought that was amazing, you know. So you kind of need that stuff. Old Masters had that too. It's kind of a tangent. Sorry about that. So the back has these little rivets, you know. It's not completely segmented, but, you know, has these little rivets all over it. And I'm not drawing them all the way across. I'm just kind of indicating them. I'm not even putting a super hard line on each one. I'm not totally segmenting them. Um, and I'm going to throw some... I want, I want to throw some shadow over here and watch where the leg is going to be. I'm going to start segmenting this back part a little bit, his tail. And then uh, right here again. Might be a little bit too many segments, but um, I'm doing that for, I don't know, I just think, I feel like it, it would be, it would serve this better. I believe there is like one too many segments in here. I want it to kind of curl in a certain way. I'm going to think of these as each individual's uh, like small shape, especially right here at the stinger. I guess it's kind of pointed stinger upward. Man, I would hate to find this thing in my bed or something like that. God, I hate when I see that in movies. I'm thinking of this as a ball shape right there. If you know how to shade a ball, you can shade this. Uh, I think I do have a shading pro... Uh, do I have a shading program on my channel? If not, I'm going to get that finished. I'm going to get to that. Shading that like a regular ball. Shading this like a square shape here. And right here, thinking of this as the simple shape that uh, that it is, you know, right here too. Shading along the edge, uh, again, like pretty much entirely core shadow based. Trying to push it, pushing down my pencil pretty hard. Pulling that line, I just think it looks attractive in this case, so I'm going to do it. Hold on. I want to make sure the camera's still on because honestly, that camera's been wigging out on me. It's been turning off. Uh, also, there's a good time to tell you. Uh, I didn't even really think about this. It's kind of in the middle. Uh, actually, forget about it. I'll talk about the next video. I was going to talk about something, but I'll talk about the next video. If you uh, haven't checked out my Patreon, check that out. I started that. I haven't really been touching it, honestly, but. I, uh, I'll i get to it later, you know what I mean? I'll start a Patreon. Uh, I'll link it below when I have time. And, uh, yeah, it'll be fun, man. It's fun to do, man. It's, like this, it's almost like a fad right now. Get a Patreon. It's essentially what that is, is I think you guys, um, it's essentially just tip money, really. It's like tip money back when I was like doing art and caricatures. People just give me tips. It's like the same thing, you know? You don't have to do anything. That's crazy. You know what I mean? It's just something so I can, you know, make the videos quicker or, or just a higher quality video, stuff like that. Uh, I like it, you know what I mean? But I'm also not, I, I don't know if you, you noticed, but I haven't really been pushing it that hard. So I, um, I'll, I'll start trying to like tell people about more about it, but you know, it's just something if you want to do, you know what I mean? Deeper shape where that kind of, uh, arm goes in the, uh, claw arm, claw arm. Trying to take care of these segments by thinking about how they these shapes overlap. So it's kind of uh, kind of difficult there. Do 
See what this kind of round shape right here? Trying to really uh, make this claw a little bit more solid. Using a line all over the place now, huh? <laughs> ah, well. It's going to turn into that. And I already kind of like, once you start doing a style like back here, I'm going to have to do it everywhere, you know? Cross hatching a little bit. And some little simple shapes here. How would that how would that go? Going into this other leg. Insects are so cool. You know, insects, bugs, all that stuff, arachnids are really amazing, you know, they're really alien-like, right? It's like, dang, this thing exists? This thing looks like it's out of science fiction, like, that's what I think about when I see stuff like the crocodile, too, this thing looks totally out of science fiction to me. Legs a little bit too fat, I'm trying to thin it out. A little bit too fat there. Thin him out a little. So anyways, um, this is um, basically the scorpion I'm going to draw right now. And I kind of didn't put any dark, dark shadows like anywhere. I, I more or less kind of made everything kind of reflect off the floor, so it causes a secondary shadow called the core. It, this, this line right here is called the core shadow, and I've kind of gone over it in a lot of other videos. Um, I guess I'll go over it a little bit more. When light hits the ground, it bounces back up a little bit and gives you this slight, see how it's slightly light over here? And then there's a dark shadow here and then there's like the regular stuff um, that dark shadow is called the core shadow and I put that all over the place because I just thought it would make it look a little bit harder looking you know what I mean um, if I was to keep going on this drawing I would try to kind of soften everything out you know what I mean throw a little half tone in there um, you know what I mean just really kind of push it more but right now I think this is good enough for a demonstration and uh, I think it overall looks all right um, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'm going to try to go over some other bugs. I'm going to try to fill up my library with as much content as I possibly can, especially now I'm trying to push it really hard. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll talk to you later, and uh, see you soon.